Ah, uh, hello, old friend. I missed you. Did you miss me too? Today's video is brought to you by the Manscaped Performance Package, which includes the Lawnmower 3.0, along with everything else to take care of your grooming needs. Put down the disposable razor and get yourself one of these. The Lawnmower 3.0 is wireless, rechargeable, and IPX7 rated, so you can safely trim the hedges in the shower. Plus, with its skin safe technology, you won't end up tilling instead of just trimming. Also in the package are the Shears 2.0 for your nails, crop preserver and toner sprays, and the Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, which I didn't imagine myself needing in my mid-30s. Go to manscaped.com slash craft computing to get 20% off, free international shipping, and two free gifts. That's manscaped.com slash craft computing. Your balls will thank you. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, and you should all recognize the PC next to me at this point. This is my epic cloud gaming server, and the original plan with this was to create a server that I could have multiple friends remote into and play games as if they were sitting in front of a local machine. Spoiler alert, after seven videos worth of tinkering on this thing, it still didn't work all that well. But I was already working on a part eight to this video series using the trio of AMD S7150 X2 cards that I came across. In fact, the system was working so well with that configuration that me and five of my patrons jumped on and had a crisis LAN party on this server. In parts one through six of this video series, I was using Nvidia graphics cards, starting with their enterprise line with the Tesla K10 and Grid K2, and then moving on to the GTX 690s, and then later on the Tesla M60s. Now, while I was able to get into games with the Grid K2 inside of a virtual machine, the lack of an NVENC encoder meant that the video encoding fell to the CPU, which meant that the system was practically useless from a remote standpoint. Also, there was a limitation of needing to use Windows 8.1 with that driver set, as no Windows 10 driver existed for that particular configuration. Next up, I tried the trio of GTX 690s that you see in the system right now. However, I was met with the classic NVIDIA Code 43 as soon as I installed the driver inside of Windows. To this point, NVIDIA has not allowed GeForce cards to be passed through into a virtual machine because NVIDIA has reserved that for their enterprise or workstation class GPUs, even though a lot of people end up using GeForce cards as workstation GPUs. I then attempted to play NVIDIA's game with a pair of Tesla M60s. However, I was met with the same exact problem as I faced with the Grid K2. That is, if you use the NVIDIA Grid driver and pass through a portion of the graphics card to a virtual machine, there is no NVENC encoding on the card. Even though NVENC is still present on the card and you're using PCI Express pass-through to get the Grid card into the machine, it disables NVENC in the driver for whatever reason. At that point, I waved my white flag and begged Team Red for Asylum with a trio of S7150 X2s with the help of SRIOV. As I said, in the meantime, I have continued to tinker with the 7150 X2s in my free time. However, earlier this week, Nvidia sent me a major curveball with one of their announcements. On Wednesday, they said that GeForce GPUs were now able to be passed through to a virtual machine sans code 43, meaning that my GTX 690s might finally work. Over here on the download page for NVIDIA driver 465.89, they highlight some new features, such as Dirt 5's new ray tracing update, the launch of Evil Genius 2, and the launch of Kingdom Hearts series on the Epic Game Store. However, it's under the gaming technology that kind of caught my eye. First off, it includes resizable bar support for the RTX 30 series, which is honestly a really cool thing to have if you can get one of those. But there's a little footnote right here that includes beta support for virtualization on GeForce GPUs. Now, let's be honest here, NVIDIA. This is not a beta. This is not a, we're trying the waters or testing things out. This is a, we finally decided to remove the block that we had arbitrarily on GeForce cards that when they detected the presence of a virtual machine, disabled the driver inside of Windows and Linux. The whole issue of your consumer GeForce GPUs not being able to pass through to a virtual machine was an arbitrary limit to force people to buy Quadro or Tesla cards. So they would end up spending more money on essentially the same technology. And yes, I know they spend more time on Quadro drivers. And yes, I know they have ECC memory on certain models of cards, but they're the same GPU cores. There's nothing architecturally different. So with all that out of the way, what is the actual plan for today? 
Well, I'm going to fire up Proxmox on this 32-core Epic system with 256 gigabytes of DDR4 ECC registered memory, and we're going to test out a GTX 690 inside of a virtual machine. I'm also going to grab a couple other GeForce cards and test them out as well, because, well, this is a beta driver, so I'd better test them. The good news, though, if you wanted to use the same technology at home, is NVIDIA is not limiting this to only new GPUs, which has been their MO in the past. In fact, they have support dating back to the 600 series Kepler GPUs, like the GTX 690s, going all the way up to the more recent 3000 series GPUs. So, I think that's it for introductions. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up and get to work. Wait, hold on, I had something for this. There we go. That's better. So here we are inside of Proxmox, and as you can see, I've already been doing a little bit of work with this system. First off, I have four different virtual machines that I have created, and for the GTX 690s, I have already configured those for PCI Express pass-through. I've also set up two other virtual machines, one for the GTX 1080 and one for a GTX 1650, both of which are physically installed in this server, but I have not configured yet for PCIe pass-through. So that's what we're gonna be working on now. Now, while NVIDIA has made some things easier on the driver side of things, there are still a couple of prerequisites we need to handle before we actually do the pass-through. First and foremost, since the server has an integrated video output, we can go ahead and disable any NVIDIA or AMD graphics drivers so virtualization pass-through can actually work. Now, on this server, I have already done that, but we're going to double check and make sure it's there anyway. So I'm going to go nano and then etc modprobe d and then blacklist.conf. Inside of this file is a list of drivers that will no longer load inside of Linux. So we've got the Radeon drivers, Nuvo drivers, NVIDIA drivers, and I also went ahead and threw the Intel sound drivers in there because those were actually linking to my GTX 690 audio drivers, and they shouldn't have been. Secondly, we need to disable the video output on these cards just in case the driver blacklist didn't take care of everything or the video output started activating during the BIOS boot of this particular PC. To do that, I'm going to type in lspci-v for verbose, and then we're going to only look at NVIDIA cards. So NVIDIA in the grep, and you can see device number 8 right here is our GTX 690. Device number 9 is the second GTX 690. We have device 21, which is my GTX 1650, along with 21.1 for the audio driver, and then 41 is my GTX 1080. Now, the GTX 690s have already been done previously on this server, the last time I tried to pass them through, but let's go ahead and take care of the GTX 1080 and 1650 right now. So first up, let's go ahead and look at device 21. So we'll do lspci-n-s and then 21 colon 00. So right here are the actual device IDs that we're going to disable inside of Linux. And to do that, there is this handy command right here. Now, I know it's a little bit long. I will have a link to the original Reddit post that I'm taking this from down in the video description, as well as the commands themselves. But we need to change the device IDs that are listed right here. So 10DE colon 1F82, then a comma 10DE colon 10FA. And we're gonna hit enter. And now our GTX 1650, the VGA output on it should be disabled. And I'm gonna do that exact same thing for the GTX 1080. So LSPCI-N-S, and that is device 41. And hit enter once the device IDs are changed and we are good to go. Once you have all the device IDs fully disabled, we need to type in update-initramfs-u. This will force those device IDs to be fully disabled. After that, you can go ahead and reboot your server and get to passing through your PCI Express devices. So we're gonna type in reboot and then cycle power really quick. With the server rebooted, let's go ahead and have some fun. First off, I'm gonna to go to VM313, which is the one that I've assigned for the NVIDIA GTX 1080. I'm gonna to go to hardware and then click on add and go down to PCI device. Under device, I'm gonna click that pull down menu and go down to device 41, which should be my GP104 GTX 1080. So click on that. I'm gonna click on all functions and then click on PCI Express as well. For right now, we are not going to click the primary GPU button. We'll do that after we have the driver installed. So go ahead and click on add. 
And as you can see, I have done nothing else to this virtual machine. It is an OVMF BIOS with a Q35 machine type. I have not hidden the CPUs or passed through a weird ID. I haven't added the GPU BIOS to pass through to trick the system into thinking that it booted up with the virtual machine. This is just straight up PCIe pass through. So let's open this thing up and click on start. Now that we are inside of Windows, and I've waited a couple of minutes so Windows would actually download a GTX 1080 driver from its own repository, let's go ahead and go and right click on the Start menu and go to Device Manager. We can see that it has installed a GTX 1080, but like usual, we have the little yellow triangle right there. And right now we're getting a, your computer's system firmware does not include enough information to properly configure and use this device. Code 35, which is not one that I'm used to seeing. But if we go to driver, you can see that we downloaded a driver from September 30th of 2020. That's obviously not the most up-to-date. So let's download the most up-to-date driver and see if this will work. So we're gonna go nvidia.com slash drivers. So I'm gonna go to GeForce drivers, GTX 10 series, GTX 1080, 64-bit. We'll do the game ready driver and search. And we've got 465.89 released highlights includes beta support for virtualization on GeForce GPUs. Yes, please download that. Let's install the NVIDIA graphics driver. No thank you on the GeForce experience. I will pass on that. Custom just to make sure GeForce experience isn't there. And we'll click on next. So here we are back on the virtual machine desktop after the reboot, and you can see my mouse cursor is acting a little bit strangely. And that's because the VNC console built into Proxmox cannot display a physical output from a GPU because they are technically on two different graphics cards. One of them is the virtual machine GPU, the other is the physical GPU. But if I navigate my mouse down to the start menu, go up to device manager, we can see that I have no errors under display adapters. And in fact, if I pull that down, there's my GTX 680 with no code 43. Who would have thought? So now that we have the GTX 1080 working, I'm gonna do a couple of configuration things to make it actually play games or at least render some 3D visuals. I'm gonna do the same thing to the 1650 and hopefully both GPUs in the GTX 690. For you, it's gonna be like 10 seconds of video time. For me, it's probably gonna be about another half hour worth of work. But hopefully, when I snap my fingers, we'll be back to a very happy Jeff watching maybe like four instances of heaven running at the same time. Oh, sorry, wasn't expecting you. Uh, we're back, and uh, I have some success to report. That is, we're about 50% successful. I have not been able to get the GTX 690 to properly pass through, and I think that's just due to some oddities of the GTX 690 and the PLX chip on board itself. But if you turn your attention to the screen right here, this is my GTX 1650 running inside of a virtual machine at 2100 megahertz and running heaven at 80 frames per second on medium settings and low tessellation. And not only that, if I exit out of that one and go into my GTX 1080 machine, this is also currently running heaven with no problems at all. And on the GTX 1080 machine, if we open up hardware info and scroll right down, you can see everything about the NVIDIA GTX 1080 is showing up right here. We've got our fan speed, we've got core voltages, temperature. This is as if I was running a native machine, but I'm not. It's in a virtual machine. See, was that so hard, NVIDIA? As much as I gripe at NVIDIA for a lot of these arbitrary limits inside of their cards, to give them credit, they did listen to consumers this time around. And in fact, it was kind of a sweeping change dating back to the 600 series of cards. They enabled GeForce pass-through on consumer graphics cards. So if you have a Linux machine and you wanna run a Windows VM, you can do that now. Now there are still some pretty major caveats to that. First and foremost, your Linux host still has to have its own video card. You can't share the video card between both the host and the guest OS at the same time. That's called SRIOV or MXGPU or VGPU. And that's a technology that Nvidia doesn't want consumers to have yet. Now, if Nvidia is watching this, I would still very much like to take a look at SRIOV on the new 3000 series cards. I know the hardware support is there for it, you just need to enable it in software. There are some use cases out there for, like I said, multi-headed virtual machines or whole home gaming rigs or 
distributed video editing machines that while you've sanctioned those off as Quadro and Enterprise technologies only, there's use cases in the consumer and professional realm that could very much take advantage of those. Now, I did successfully get one of the GPUs inside the GTX 690 linked to a virtual machine and launched and had the driver installed. However, it wasn't recognizing the display output, but I didn't get a code 43 either. The second GPU on the 690, however, gives me a code 35 when I install the driver in Windows. So it's not a code 43, so I guess that's a step up from where we've been before, but it's also not working either. Now, I figured this could have been an EFI problem as the GTX 690 is not a native UEFI card. So I flashed on some BIOS, which according to Wendell over at Level 1 Techs were sketchy AF. And when he says it, you know it's serious. But I went ahead and did it, but to no success for me. Since UEFI failed on a virtual machine, I figured I would try a BIOS boot virtual machine. However, that is still affected by code 43, thanks to NVIDIA. So it appears NVIDIA's drivers do unlock the GPU inside of a virtual machine, but only if you're running a UEFI BIOS. So I obviously still have some work to do to get the GTX 690s working in this system to create the six-headed gaming workstation I originally sought out to. But NVIDIA, this is definitely a step in the right direction. And thank you for listening to The Consumer. Anyway, if you liked this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon or Floatplane. Links are both down in the video description because this hardware is really expensive. So for now, that's all I have for you in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Oh, I miss barrel aged beers. Hope you guys enjoyed Mixology March, but we are into April, which means it is a return to craft beer. And I am kicking it off with uh, one that looks pretty fantastic. This is from Lewitt Brewing War Tortoise 2020 Barrel Aged Edition, a 9.4% Imperial Stout. Now, if you watch the channel enough, you know I usually try to theme the beer to whatever build or project we're working on for the day. In this case, War Tortoise is an exactly perfect match for my epic cloud gaming system, as uh, this is just a tortoise shell with a whole bunch of guns strapped to it, much like the three GTX 690s that are strapped inside of this thing. If your motor oil comes out like this, you are well past your change date. In fact, I may need to take the head off this and make sure there's no sludge. Oh, man. As much as I love cocktails, and often I would prefer having a cocktail to a craft beer, uh, the bourbon and caramel and vanilla and oak and chocolate, right on the nose of this. I missed you. That is incredibly smooth. And I don't even want to know the calorie count. That's like a chocolate caramel brownie with a little snifter of bourbon on the side. Oh, that's good. It's smooth, it's sweet, it's rich, it's thick, and there's every single flavor I would expect to find in a bourbon barrel-aged imperial stout. Guts, glory, grim determination, appetite for destruction of a robust imperial stout with pronounced notes of roasted barley and chocolate. There's chocolate, there's caramel, there's a little bit of vanilla, there's this real deep roast that really doesn't come in until the back end of the flavor, but it is definitely present. There's a real rich dark chocolate in this one. Like I said, this is definitely a very sweet Imperial Stout, but very, very good. Hello? you in regards to a legal case filed against your name. This call is to inform you that we have received legal notice concerning fraudulent activity against your social security number. Oh no! Kindly press one to speak to our officer on duty. Ignoring of this message will be considered as intentional attempt of non-appearance. <laughs> uh. 
I got one earlier today that had some better voice synthesis. It was a male voice synthesis, and it actually had some inflections in it, but it was still very clearly uh, machine language. Uh, but what was great is they ran it through a filter and gave it an echo, so it sounded like he was trying to call me from like a school gym or something. Uh, it was pretty great. 